what you think Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. And it is what I call What Women Want Wednesday. I am Nicole Everett, the host of Conversations with Nicole, a talk show based here in Tallahassee, focused on connecting the community through conversations. So this is an interactive live. I love to hear from the viewers. So as you come on to uh, join the conversation today, I ask you to tell us what city and state you are tuning in from. What city and state? Just put it in the comments. Where are you tuning in from? We want to know. We want to know. We want to give you a shout out. So I see Michael Perry here giving us a happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, Michael, to you. Thank you for joining us. We have a full slate of folks with us here tonight. I'm so excited to be talking to the cast of Hands Up. It has a little bit of a longer name. I'm going to let E-Marie tell you more about that. But a play that's here in Tallahassee, um, both uh, virtually and in person, but mostly virtually. And uh, E. Marie will tell you more about that. Uh, e. Marie Sissel is no stranger to conversations with Nicole. She actually was on season one back in 2016, um, promoting the Midtown Entertainment back then. But now she has uh, rebranded and has Somo Arts, Somo Playhouse. So I'm super excited to have her with me tonight and some of the players from the play. So we are just ready to have great conversation. We are going to be talking about using theater for social change, using theater for social change. So without further ado, please help me welcome Miss E. Marie Sisso. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here, Nicole. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank so you. good to see you. Good to be here. Yes. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So tell me what you've been doing. What's going on? Well, just like everybody maintaining and <laughs> living out this uh, this interesting year, but uh, theater hasn't stopped. We're, we're excited to say that. Of course, we took a break for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but this is um, actually the second show. We did a show for Juneteenth, but okay. this is our second show coming back out. And we are excited that we are having performances in person and online, uh, which is new for us, mm -hmm. uh, but but it is exciting um, progression of theater and evolution of theater for okay. us. Nice, nice. So for those who may not know who you are, just tell them a little mm -hmm. bit about your background and mm -hmm. you know, what you do. Well, I'm a Tallahassee native. I, I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. Uh, I went to Lincoln High School, let's go Trojans, um, and Tallahassee Community College and Florida a and um, and uh, this is my home. This has always been my home. I, I left for a few years after graduation, but when I returned back to Tallahassee, I'd been doing theater for a number of years. And and then when I got here, I kept honestly asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Um, education is in my family, so I, I knew I was going to have education. Um to, to, to do and to teach, but I wanted to do more. And then one day he just kind of talked to me for a long time. He said, I want you to do theater. I want you to open up a theater company. Okay. Uh, and since that day, that's all I've been doing. I promised. I said, this is all I'm going to do, God. You gave me the gift and I'm going to use it. Awesome. Awesome. Now, while at FAMU, mm -hmm. you you involved in acting? I was. I actually started theater at Tallahassee Community College. I I was music major. I did music from fourth grade all the way into college, and I just needed an elective. 
So I said, oh, well, let me try a theater class. Okay. So completely, completely changed my life and started and fell in love with theater. And then I heard FAMU was doing The Wiz. Ah. And that I said, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to say, let me paint a wall. Let me. They had already cast by the time I found out about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they had cast in December and I found out about it in February. Okay. I went over there and I was like, oh, can I do this? I literally said, can I just paint a wall? And then Luther Wells, he said, do you know how to sing? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, well, go join rehearsal. And that wow. that made I'm telling you made my life uh, at wow. the end because I always wanted to do the Wiz and so okay. that that's how I did started doing theater at uh, Florida A and M University. Wow! So you caught the bug from there, huh? I did, I did, and uh, it has not let me go since then. Wow! <laughs> amazing, amazing. I'm I'm glad to hear that story. Yeah. I don't recall hearing that story from you before, but that's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. So tell me about Hands up. Hands up. Mm -hmm. So TCC uh, decided to do this production and reached out to my company, uh, Somo Playhouse. And of course, I was excited about it because it was written in 2014 <clears throat> as a react. It was commissioned by the New Black Fest. And they, right. And they um, commissioned seven different writers to write their reaction from the killing of Michael Brown. Mm. So that's why there's different perspectives and, and and how they felt about it, how they felt just being black in America. And it was powerful when I began to read it because it seems like it was written this year mm. instead of 2004. It could have been written in the 1960s, the 70s. Mm. It's hard to say. It could have been written in any decade. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very relevant to what we're going through right now. In fact, we could literally add some more names that we talk about in the production uh, about people who have been killed by police violence. And that's what it really is about. Uh, it's about um, unarmed Black people. It's, um, it's about people who don't identify as um, Black, but they are Black. It's, it's different stories mm. that how we see ourselves in today's society and having to deal with uh, police shootings and, and abuse. Wow. Powerful, powerful. So mm -hmm. it's seven playwrights, seven mm -hmm. testaments, correct? That's exactly what it is. Seven okay. different playwrights. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So you have seven players that are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> estimates. Yeah. It's seven male actors and one female actor. So, okay. mm -hmm. so all of them are, are different. Some of them are students. Some of them are um, community members. Uh, some of them are international um uh, actors and they're all kind of coming together to tell these very impactful stories. Okay, very good. <coughs> well, let's bring on our, our special guests, the, the Thespians yeah. among yeah. us. So why don't we start with Miss Nia, yeah. the lady of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, good to have you. So Nia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, hello, I'm Nia Jameson Sissel and um, I happen to be the daughter of the director. <laughs> um, I, I was born here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Florida a and for performance theater. Um, I minored in music. And for uh, the last five years, I've been traveling internationally as a cruise ship performer. Oh, wow. Yes. How nice. Okay. <laughs> now, what role do you play in the play? I play the character of Nikki. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a short, um, well, not short, it's pretty a long monologue by Nambi Kelly. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's a crazy uh monologue of about this girl named nikki and okay. um, how, she, how she goes through domestic abuse uh, racial injustice and mm -hmm. police brutality and all of those sorts of things all gotcha. wrapped into one monologue gotcha okay very good well thank you mm -hmm. we'll chat with you in a little, a little while so next we're going to bring up jermaine 
Hi, hi, how you doing? Doing well, doing well. Welcome, welcome. So tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Jermaine Benjamin Jr. Um, I I'm from Miami Day 305, all the way live. <laughs> um, I attended um, high school at Dr. Michael M. Crop Senior High School, and my my um, teacher for the drama department was Jamel Rashad Booth, and he's a um, FAMU alum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I currently attend um, Tallahassee Community College, um, and I'm going to get my AA's degree and then hopefully transfer to FSU to get my my BFA in theater. Okay, wonderful. And what a role do you play in Hands Up? I play the character Amen. And um, a little bit about him. He's kind of an extremist in a sense, and he is very, um, <laughs> he is very, very, very nice. Ooh. My stuff drop. Sorry, he is nice and he's charming and stuff. And but you know everything going on with the world today and um during that time period, it's just a lot for him. And he decides that there's only one way that he can put his how do I explain it his all into it in a sense. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> And last but certainly not least, Mr. Kiati. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> you doing well? oh, too cool for me. <laughs> Come on, tell the folks what you know. Tell them a little bit about you. Uh, uh, my name is Kiati. Um, from Day County, of course. Yeah. Uh, they, they make the best. Um, I started acting at a very, very young age. I can't quite put a, a age on it, but um, I think what really started it was Tyler Perry's plays. Um, mm. You know, me and my my grandmother and my mom we would watch them all the time, and I would we would watch them so much because they were so funny. I would end up reenacting certain pieces from the plays and. Mm. You know, my mom and my family was like, oh, this is like really good. So um, <laughs> I'm going to Newland Middle School, Huskies, yeah. yeah I was yeah. in the uh, theater magnet program. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, it just kind of took off. I took a little quick break, but, but when I got back into high school, I got back into acting and I was part of the Thespian Club there. And we went on to do a lot of great work. We won um, quite a bit of competitions. With the district and states every year, uh, critics' choice and superiors. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, nice, nice, yeah, nice, so. nice. Tell us about um, the character you play in um, Hands Up. Well, my the, my character doesn't really have a name. Okay. Um, but I think that that is kind of what makes the character so influential because he's speaking from the perspective of the mm -hmm. whole of the black community and more mm -hmm. so the the younger generation of the black community. So I think mm -hmm. that really was um, quite a clever play by the writer, which is uh, Dennis Allen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's really, it's really raw. The emotion is very raw, anger, emotion, and it's a build up to it. And I think, you know, after seeing the first six monologues, you can kind of tell that there's a build in the emotion. And I think my character is the shot that broke the camel back. Mm. Gotcha. And, um, yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you all for sharing and thank you all for being here. So have you been in a play, anything like this before? Have any of you been in, in some a similar production? Um, well, I, I can say that I've been in a play about our community as young black people. Um, I was in the play called A Day of Absence. And yeah. basically it's about um, what would happen if all the black people were to go missing back in, I believe the um, 1920s, 1930s, around that time. Mm -hmm. And so we were all in white face and we had, we were typical white people um, from the country. 
and just trying to live this life without our servants and our maids and whatnot and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been in a play kind of like that in a sense. I really want to do that play. <laughs> I, I found out about that play a while at FAMU and, and that's one I really want to do. It basically all the black people in the town disappear mm -hmm. and see uh, the white people trying to kind of figure out what to do. So it's it's comical, but it's also, it has a message behind it. So right. it's a pretty good play. <laughs> I call it the black rapture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. That's what it seemed like too. When the black people came back, they was like, "Well, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I can't tell you." Yeah. <laughs> I have not been in the play, but I, I've done two two monologues from two different shows. One is called okay. "Her Color Girls." Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other one, which yes, it became a movie, <laughs> um, and also the Colored Museum. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them talk about uh, mm -hmm. some of the same things that we talk about in Hands Up. Okay. Like uh, domestic abuse. Yeah. Um, and you know, racial injustice. A lot of a lot of the same topics in both of those plays. Mm -hmm. You were actually in the Colored Museum when you were four. I know you don't remember. Oh, wow. <laughs> you were a little girl when you were you played in in it. So. Oh, wow. oh my gosh! I think I know which one she played too. <laughs> Lala, right? She 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 was the reflection of uh, one of the characters, like the right. little girl. But yeah, nice, mm -hmm. nice, nice. Mm -hmm. So this particular production, tell me about how much training or practice that you all have to do in order to to reach perfection. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're still. <laughs> I think we're still on our way to get to perfection. Right, right, right. <laughs> I know Kiyadi. Look, he's so cool. He got it. <laughs> I, I thought he was I can't. Um, All right, no. But I think seriously. it starts from a point of kind of understanding the history of, you know, African-Americans in the United States. And then from that point, it's not so hard for me, at least I'll say, because I have a habit of like all of the old movies, um, Amistad, higher learning, anything with that racial tension in it, mm -hmm. I tend to watch those a lot. Mm -hmm. um, no, a lot of my like my mother, she can't handle that emotionally. Mm -hmm. But I, I think I've become accustomed to it because it kind of keeps me in that mindset of this is still happening. You have mm -hmm. to be aware of what's going on, you know. And if you're not aware of your past, it can very well repeat itself. So mm -hmm. I think once I get through those motions and then just read in the lines and get the lines down just being an African-American in this country, you're going to naturally fit into that role. It, it won't take a lot to get into it. Even if you're not a direct, let's say you haven't experienced directly what those, what the actor or the, the writer was expressing, mm -hmm. you feel the emotion because you know somebody who has been affected by that. You know somebody who right. does feel like that. So I think, especially for this particular play and because of what's going on today still, it doesn't take a lot to snap you into that mode. Okay. We actually started the process off by, we had to do rehearsals through Zoom. Mm. So we would have rehearsals, meet the stage manager, uh, shout out to Skylar. Uh, we would have rehearsals with Ooh. each, one and talk about their experiences. Have you ever experienced racial profiling? Have you ever gotten angry about a situation? Have you heard of this? And we talked a lot right at the beginning about what they had gone through individually. And we also discussed doing something called an actor's journal 
Mm-hmm. To where I hope they're still journaling. Uh, you got your eyes <laughs> Okay. <laughs> where they would write down their thoughts, they would write down their feelings and everything that made up themselves that they could put into the character. But it basically is pulling out uh, what the character is thinking and what we call the backstory. So we we, we definitely talked a lot about uh, preparation up to what they were going to handle in the monologues because it's it's not something that you can easily like um, process. What I'm saying it's a lot to carry on, a lot of emotional baggage mm-hmm. with these characters, and so you you really had to um, really write as a form of therapy. It also, not only finding the character, but um, to where you had to write down your own feelings too. Right. Yeah. Well, have you all found the journal to be helpful? I have personally. I know that um, not naturally I'm a giddy, happy-go-lucky person. And Amen's character, he's very like like me, you know, comedic and funny and welcoming. But at certain points in the monologue, it is it does become very, very serious. And it's very hard to just snap like that, like how he does. So the journal, I write down my thoughts. I write down his thoughts. I write down my thoughts in the character of him mm-hmm. as well. And like a lot of that helps me emotionally and like literally you can ask Miss Sissel. I was like, oh my gosh, Miss Sissel, I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. Dang, it didn't work. And it's like, <laughs> it's so frustrating. But the more and more I use the journal, the more and more I almost get there. Hmm. Yeah, it's that's interesting that you say that because I often wonder about actors, like how do you get there? How do you, you know, I know you, you know, read your lines, you kind of study your character or at least try to get a a sense of of who the character is so that you can kind of embody this person and you know be believable to your audience but gosh it just seems like such a challenge like you know Mm -hmm. for instance if you have to cry in this moment you know you really taking on this persona to you know, imagine if you were this person and you were, you know, literally like in their shoes. Mm-hmm. Some people in some, they have something called, you're right. And some, in, they have something called method acting. Mm-hmm. Sometimes actors uh, will have to completely embody the character 24 seven. And mm-hmm. that's how they get into the character. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I'm not a fan of that <laughs> because to a certain extent, <laughs> then it's not acting. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Cause you know, you have, unfortunately the, the guy who played um, Batman, mm-hmm. not, uh, I'm sorry, the Joker. Joker. <laughs> Joker. Right. Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger. Mm-hmm. Joker hands down, yes. by the way, just throwing That's that out Joker. there. Oh, Agreed. Gosh. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great job. Mm-hmm. But he did something called method acting, mm-hmm. where 24-7 he was messed up in the head, mm-hmm. where he did drugs uh, that unfortunately caused him to pass away. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm just saying, I, but then you have some actors that uh, can just cut it on, mm-hmm. cut it off. Mm-hmm. And then you have some, like me, it takes me a moment to put myself into this character. I have to pull on uh, experiences that I've had in my life to connect myself with this character, which because of the topics, mm-hmm. <laughs> because of the topics in uh, Hands Up, I can connect to it because we're living this right now. Mm-hmm. And we are literally living some of these things right now. So speaking of living this right now, because, you know, that is our reality, does that help you with your your roles or your characters in a, a play like Hands Up? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I find myself getting more emotional. I'm, I'm trying to connect as an actor but yes, I, I kind of get overwhelmed with emotion because mm-hmm. I'm like, 
I'm, I'm talking about, in, in my monologue, I talk about other uh, people who have died um, at the hands of cops. And I'm thinking about Breonna Taylor, mm -hmm. who just passed away, you know? Right. I'm the hearing, I'm thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, so ab absolutely, it, it, it does get overwhelming sometimes. With my character, it's like um, certain key words that he says really, really get to me. And the more you read about your character, like the more you read the words that they say, mm -hmm. the more you understand mm -hmm. what they're saying, really, really. And it's like those key words, I put so much stress and emphasis on them because emotionally I feel that. I feel what he's going through as a Black man in a community that's against him that's made to be against him. And then to watch all those people and to hear about all these people going through the same turmoil. And mind you, this is, um, this play was made way before the situations that we go through now, but it still repeats itself over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so like looking at that, it, it can really frustrate you and really hurt you and your character. Mm -hmm. And so that helps a lot with it as well. Gotcha. So is it a, is it the words that really make a difference or it matter or is it the intentionality and the emotion behind the words that have a greater effect? So it's always the it's a bit of both. Yeah, it, it, but yeah, yeah, yes, you're both. you're right. But we the the writer writes the words for a certain reason and right. this why as an actor we just don't read over certain words we have to actually break down why did they say this particular thing mm -hmm. because it they mean something behind the words and we have to pull them out mm -hmm. some people could just read it and like oh it's nothing no this writer meant something this it's something they were trying to say and we have to figure out what was the writer really trying to tell us? And then we have to convince ourselves in our head. I call us professional liars. And first we have to lie to ourselves. And then we have to actually figure it out and, and, then, and then present that to the audience. Uh, with our own interpretation, this is why you can do Shakespeare. You've done Shakespeare forever, but it can mean something different to you um, and where it lines up is what the author meant and what you think it means. And that marriage together is the differences in the performances. All right. And with the director as well, because of course you need the director's interpretation as well. And right. so it's right. all the three things together. So don't get right. rid of me. <laughs> no, never that. So we have a question from Tyrone Brooks, who's with the Tallahassee Ballet. He's the artistic director over there. He wants to know what resources have you utilized that helped your process in prepare in preparation for your characters? Anybody? Um. Yeah. Like I like I said, uh, I watch a lot of those those movies that you know have that sensitive emotion in it that's going to trigger you, I watch them I, and I put them on repeat. Mm -hmm. I'll constantly watch them. I'll pick like maybe three or four movies and just watch it. Constantly. Mm -hmm. Rosewood is definitely probably one of my favorite movies, but mm -hmm. in a sad sort of way. There's a mm -hmm. scene, um, I can't remember her name, uh, but the lady that Florida Evans. She mm -hmm. plays a mom That's in the, the movie. And it's a white, yeah, thank you. you right, I'm sorry, <laughs> Lord mercy. Um, she, she is like, she's old, but she's been nursed to almost everybody in the community and the white town next to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's trying to fight for her son's life. And you know, like, you guys know, that my son wouldn't do this. You guys know who did this. Right. And they shoot her on the porch. Mm -hmm. And that scene always sticks in my mind because I always have a conversation with not just my mom, but my family. And this drives me a lot through this entire uh, monologue. I don't want to turn on my TV or look at my phone and see a picture of my mom or my dad or my brother in one of those articles or videos mm. because 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to have no understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have, I, me personally, I don't think I'll be able to have the emotional and mental strength to not just flip. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, those movies, but watch them constantly, it keeps me in a state of alertness. So that better prepares me for, God forbid, if anything like that ever happens to somebody in my immediate family, yeah. I won't, it won't be much, as much of a shock. It'll be something I can kind of just gradually ease into and move accordingly. Right. Because this is your form of protest, honestly. Using theater, mm -hmm. this is your way to speak out uh, and to let people know of the issue, you know, to educate, to bring awareness, um, to, you know, encourage progressive social change mm -hmm. in, a, in a calm manner. This is your, this is your way to kind of, yeah, like I said, protest. Yeah. yeah. So what do you all think about that? In, in particular, Nia, Jermaine and Keontae about using theater as a form of social change to mm -hmm. help usher in um, change in our society about race, about gender, about, you know, so many of the things that we, we take issue with. So what, what do y'all think about that? I love it personally. I love it. But at the same time, I do have my, my worries because like um, Ms. Sissel said before, we we can do so much on the stage, but it's what the the audience takes home. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they won't. So, OK, a lot of people have like different ways of coping with cer certain things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll dismiss certain things or sometimes they'll just see the comedy and not the the message, mm -hmm. the real message. Mm -hmm. So right. along with um, that that um, play. But both plays, um, The Color Museum and A Day of Absence, those are both comedies. And sometimes it worries me that people, when they watch it, they just think about the comedy and they don't take home the message. Mm -hmm. So, um, but at the same time, you have to say as an actor, what are you going to do? What, what risk are you willing to take for them to get that? Because you want to get that person's story across. Mm, powerful. What risk are you willing to take as the actor? Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it. Um, I do believe that it um, it's a form of uh, making people aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, because prior to reading this monologue, I hadn't known about the story of the the three ladies that I talk about in this uh, in this monologue. Okay. It, um, she talks about uh, three other women who um, were um, abused by the police. Mm. And, um, I, yeah, like um, like Jermaine said, it is really important to find what you want to say, what what the 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 real message of um, of your monologue of your mm -hmm. character, and. Um, once you once you get to that, once you let these people know what's happening, um, I think that brings about um, action. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Very good. So you know. Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I do. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know he's so cool. Um. <laughs> I do enjoy it, you know, like Jermaine said, I do enjoy it for two reasons. I, I do it for one, just for the love of the art, or mm -hmm. just for the art itself. The second reason I do it is to, this is my attempt at honoring my ancestors, especially those such as your uh, Martin Luther King, your Dr. King, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, you you know right from wrong and i think everybody deep down inside knows that violence isn't really the answer um violence begets violence so this is my way of appeasing that notion but like jermaine said i i am concerned highly because you know it only reaches so far and it does 
it's what the audience takes. I'll never forget my mother told me one time, I'll never forget it. People only understand, people are understand of things are limited to their perception. Hmm. How again. they perceive reality is how they understand reality. He, tell, he said, people's understanding is limited to their perception. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. However they perceive reality, that's the limit to their understanding. There's, mm-hmm. you know, think of it like the ocean and space. There's a bunch of things we don't know. But if you don't even attempt to perceive that as a reality in your life, you won't really understand. You won't can't even begin to understand it. Mm-hmm. Right. Gotcha. And, and we do have the power to change perception. We have, I mean, with our words, with our performances, there is that potential to actually change someone's behavior based on what they have what they have seen. Like yeah. you, you say in your monologue, and I, I always love it, and I actually brought it because I was like, I, I really wanted to say it. I'm not interested in giving you a history lesson. There are scholars out there more knowledgeable than I am. We don't talk politics, sociology, psychology. We're That's not always us. Okay. It, that's not us. Um, so, because you can find that anywhere. Right. But we're, I mean, we're supposed to entertain. That's what we do. But then we can educate and bring awareness at the same time. And that's having a greater platform than, you know, some other medium, some other lecturers or, or things like that, if I'm making sense with that. Um, there's a lot of things that we could do just by performing. Uh, the words of people who have gone through other things. We don't actually have to go through those things, but we can portray those characters and those stories. And that brings about societal change and, and awareness. And that's fun. That's fun to, to do. And that's um, an impact that we can leave our performances. Um, we can leave this world better. Uh, than than it than it was. Amen. So let me ask you, who do you believe this play is for? <laughs> it's for everybody. It, it, it's it's for everyone. <laughs> it's for all of us, and even for us. I mean, we go into this thinking that we're going to teach someone something and we learn, we learn a lot. Every character mm-hmm. that we portray, we learn. So it's for everybody, your mom, your dad, for anybody, people of color, non-people. It's for everybody to know these stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, that's it. Anybody want to add to that? Keate says um, a line towards the end of his monologue. And... Um, I can't remember for sure exactly what he says, but he says something about, he says not, um, no one can save us. I mean, he uh, says, uh, no, not white, not, yeah, but no, yeah, not, not that white, not black, not police. Yeah, not white, not black, not anybody. Oh. Like, and what he says, y'all gotta come see the show because I'm giving right, right, right. Okay, yeah, but what he says, <laughs> you are <pretty> good, sir. <laughs> what he says is so important because a lot of people a lot of people always say oh well black on black crime is a thing too and then people are like oh white and black crime is a thing and it's more important da, 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 da. both of that is very important that is something that we as a community, us as black people need to work on. And that's something as us as black and white people need to work on. We need to live in a in a world of just peace. Mm-hmm. Indeed. So when we speak about those things, we don't n- neglect that we have our own little things in our communities that we do wrong. We put that in there. Mm-hmm. And we say that, and I don't know if other people pick it up, but every time I'm on that stage and I listen to Kiate and I listen to um, Superior Fantasy, Superiority Fantasy, which is the first um, monologue, he says something about that too. And it's like, wow, mm-hmm. we really do need to work on mm-hmm. humanity, our morals mm-hmm. as people. Yeah. Not, 
Right. Yeah, as humans, not of color, mm -hmm. not people of color, not people of, of white or black or Asian or whatever. We, as a unit, need to work on being more peaceful towards each other. Mm -hmm. So should law enforcement see this play? I think they should. I think everyone should, like Miss Sissel said. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. 100% agree. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I definitely agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I think law enforcement may get a different take on things based on, I, and, and I haven't seen the play, mm -hmm. but based on the way you all are describing it, perhaps this would be an opportunity for them to put themselves or, or witness, um, you know, some of the, the victims of um, police brutality and, and, and deaths. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like the name of Keate's monologue is called How I Feel. Mm -hmm. And it and that's just it. We're just telling you how we feel. Mm -hmm. So right. whether you agree or you don't agree, don't dismiss, you know, how we feel. Right. Um, mm -hmm. we're we're just laying our heart on, on the stage and um and that's it. Yeah. That's really, that that's pretty much it. Yeah. So and, and can can we say hello to our other uh, members as well? <laughs> Trey and Steven and Noble. <laughs> hey y'all, uh, yes. Yes. crew. So, <laughs> crew, yes. So folks are growing very impatient. They are asking when, where. They want the details. How can they find out about the show? So. Uh, I, I wasn't ready to give all of that yet, but yeah. I guess we'll go ahead and do it again <laughs> at the very end, end. So let them know. How can they see it? While it's being live streamed, Broadway On Demand, they can go to uh, Theater TCC that it's producing uh, along with my company, Soma Arts. Theater TCC <laughs> uh, is, uh, you can go to their website. You can actually purchase tickets through Theater TCC. Uh, we can actually put the link uh, okay. somewhere if you can just yeah. click on. And what's nice is that you'll actually get the link, an individualized link for your day, your time, and uh, it can't be shared with anybody else. Um, so you'll you'll get your specific link to, to okay. watch the show. But you can also, we do have limited seating. And we do like an audience and we can, you know, we got a few more seats that can be filled. Uh, so it would be, it would be nice. Of course, we do have to practice social distancing, but uh, our show is, what's today? Wednesday? Yes. Wednesday. So, Wednesday, so, yeah, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, <laughs> so yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at eight. Um, and, and you okay. can come see it uh but you just have to let us know well in advance so uh, and then but it is streaming online oh look i was writing it in and noble beat me to it there we go <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, noble. i love it i love it i love having a wing person <laughs> so it's october 2nd and 3rd at 8 p.m and october 4th at 2 p.m Mm -hmm. right. Which is my anniversary. Yay. Happy anniversary, Noble. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So what all what have you all learned in this process in terms of the play? What what have you learned? Hmm. Um, well <laughs> oh go ahead, Nia. <laughs> okay, you're gonna call me out? Okay. Okay, well. There is one line that she says in this monologue, and she says, my character, she, she says, that cop failing me makes me stronger. Mm. And um, it resonated with me mm. um, because it kind of spoke for a, a lot of people who are dealing with uh, these problems with police police brutality mm -hmm. and it just kind of just tells me tells us that you know we might be sad we might be hurt yes these things might ha be happening but we need to be strong we need to stand together and uh fight this mm -hmm. um because like i said awareness is the first thing um we know about these things and we need to fight for our injustices um 
and uh, do their best we can to stop it from happening. A line do from my. Go ahead. Okay, a line from mine. Um, he says, "You have to be able to love so ferociously that you are willing to lose yourself and sacrifice mm -hmm. in order to be with love." So, like, what what that means to me is that love conquers all for me. And even though, like, some people are like, "Oh my gosh, this man is crazy," it's like, no, love really does conquer all. If we try to fight, if we try to, if we stop being so violent towards each other, then the world would be a better place. Okay. Hmm. All right. Honestly. Yeah. Yate. Yate. <laughs> it's okay if you don't have anything. It's, it's cool. Um, no what have you learned? No, I, I think this has learned. I, I've learned how to be more adaptive mm -hmm. and more patient. Because mm -hmm. listening to all of the monologues, like my monologue is last, so I get to sit and listen and watch everybody else perform. Mm -hmm. And it's always, I always pick out something new every night in every rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, you take the good with the bad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unfortunate that this stuff is still going on in, in 2020. But you have to keep hope. You have to keep hope alive to some degree because there are you know, I don't want to be another martyr. I think as as a black community specifically, we've lost so many many powerful people. Mm -hmm. I don't you know, I just don't know how much more we can handle. So it puts you in a position where, you know, like uh, a favorite rapper of mine, Phil Mike said, you know, survive the encounter. But don't I understand that the emotion is there and it hurts and you can get angry. You can definitely get angry, but you know, don't go throw your life away. There's you play chess, not checker. There's a way to play this game. Um and if you don't survive your town, you can't really afford any more modern. Hmm. At the end of the day, you never, and I say this all the time, and that's why I'm, I, I pray all the time that this comes to, like, to an immediate halt because it's going to be the wrong son. It's going to be the wrong daughter. It's going to be the wrong mother. You know, somebody is going to lose their life, and that family, they're not going to be able to handle that in the appropriate way. Hmm. And there's a line in one of the monologues, actually in the first superiority uh, fantasy. If this doesn't stop now, this is you throwing a match on a tender that could possibly spark another civil war. Can't hmm. really afford that right now. We cannot afford that as a community, as a country. We cannot afford that. Hmm. It's too much faith. So, yeah, patience is definitely one of those things I've learned. And being able to adapt, like Ms. Sissel said, and not take take the words that the writer wrote and portray that in a way that combines your experience as well as what the writer is trying to get across. Okay. Very good. Wow. Well, you know, lots of thoughts. Um, <laughs> I do definitely believe that theater is a tool for social change. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you all are using this platform in this way. You know, I, I've, I've, even, again, even though I have not seen the play, I imagine some of the characters may feel a sense of helplessness, may feel a sense of n a lack of a support in feeling like there's really no one to come to their rescue. And there probably are many of us out here that can relate to that, to that hopeless, helpless feeling. 
um, because you know we can't we can't compete with the powers that be, right? <laughs> or at least we believe we can't. Um, I, I believe Jermaine's sentiment about love really being the key. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hopefully that will be what is gleaned from yeah. uh, the play. Yeah, uh, there's light. There's yeah. a lot of light. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of light. Oh, um, make me blush. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of light and love through the whole thing it's just not seven different monologues of this this this, this. no it is not and we were very careful to not let it be full of rage the entire time mm -hmm. um uh, there are moments of course but no there's there's comedy there's light there's passion there's there's a lot of surprises in this and it's it's well written it is Good. There are moments where they do talk about how to overcome yeah. a lot of these. Good. I, I like to hear that because <laughs> while I am a person who loves a great conversation and, you know, I, I like to talk, but I like some action. I like to, <laughs> you know, I want to see what we're doing, what we're doing, what we're doing. <laughs> right. Okay. I want to know what, you know. How Amen. can we move forward? How can we progress from here to a better place? You know, so that's the goal. Mm -hmm. that, that's ultimately the goal. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, exactly how you said. Um, you get that feeling of how, where are we going? How do how do we how do we <laughs> action? Um, there was um one a uh, one woman who came up to us after uh she saw the play. Uh, mm -hmm. crying. She was in tears. Mm -hmm. And she said she wanted to bring more people to uh, come see it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why we do this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 When, <laughs> when So when that happens, well, how do y'all feel when y'all see something like that? <laughs> like, it really? makes me feel great. <laughs> <laughs> our job, you know? Right. That means we doing the job real yeah, well. It's, it's <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, not and even the first night, the second night um, of performance. After we got off stage and we another great show, uh, I was getting ready to go to the car, and there was this uh, older white woman sitting outside, and she like stopped me in the middle of my tracks, and like you were amazing. Your monologue was just so powerful, mm -hmm. and um, like it, tears coming out of her eyes, and that really touched me because. For me as a young black man to get that emotion across to an older white woman that I have almost nothing in common with, that is very powerful. Very, very powerful. You've done your job. You've been that right. bridge. And yeah. that's what's exciting is that right. you're bridging different people to come together to have that discussion. We can't do anything if we're just on this path just by ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so theater can be that bridge of bringing these different people together. So you've done your job, you guys. And they do their job quite beautifully, I, I must say. I'm very impressed by each one of them. Every single night, I, I focus, honestly, they don't know this, <laughs> but I, I really say I'm gonna focus on this monologue tonight. And I see different things that I love from each and every one of them. And they're doing their job quite beautifully. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, yeah, I, Kiati, I know you said you have nothing in common with this white woman, but you probably have more mm -hmm. in common than you recognize. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. Which is part of why, you know, she could connect the humanness of it. You know, these are human beings that we're talking yeah. about that are being yeah. treated, um, you know, inhumanely. So, yeah, no, kudos to you. Kudos to all of you for um, for this wonderful work. And I can't wait to see this play. Yeah. <laughs> we can't wait for you to come see it. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm you got a, you got contacts on us Friday, Saturday night at eight, Sunday okay. at two. Mm -hmm. all right. Look, y'all heard it. It's recorded right here. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, yeah, no, I really appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to it. So one more again, give them the details. They can go to <laughs> look at it. Being on. <laughs> yeah. TCC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so you can cool. also go to you know on Facebook. You can uh find TCC on Facebook, on the Instagram, on Twitter, and go to Somo Arts, S-O-M-O Art, and we have the the link there and find out a little more about our theater, our new facility opening up in 2021. Okay, and nice. So I know we're excited about it. A four thousand okay. square foot theater space. Beautiful. So we're so find out a little more about you know, okay. our future. Good mm-hmm. deal. That's gonna be uh, quite uh, uh, an expansion from uh, our little spot over on South. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that was maybe I don't know, a thousand, maybe even a little less. Yeah, look, I know, Black Dog Theater. Listen, we were grateful. <laughs> Season uh, three of Conversations with Nicole was in that little theater, so I'm grateful. <laughs> look, <laughs> I appreciate it. About the evolution, yes. yes. And, look, yes. and look at conversations with Nicole now. <laughs> you know, to God be the glory. So yeah. listen, you know, y'all have got to come see this play. October 2nd and 3rd, 8 p.m. October 4th, 2 p.m. Online, virtual, mm-hmm. but also limited seat in person at the TCC Auditorium, Turner Auditorium. So, mm-hmm. yes. Tallahassee, Tallahassee. Yes. Oh, look, Noble is on point. That's what I'm <laughs> oh, yes. Come on out. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I play no games today. That's right. Okay. Oh, yes. I, I need him on my marketing team. Okay. <laughs> what? Yes. So, so, snowballarts.org. You can get more information there. How can the community assist? I mean, outside of definitely supporting the production this weekend, what what else can we assist with? Uh, Well, okay, so the proceeds of the play right now go towards the future of the theater program at TCC where where I started. So I'm so excited about that. So we also need maybe some donations <laughs> towards Somo Arts as, as, as well. They brought me in as a director, but 100% of the proceeds at this point go towards uh, advancing that program. So right. we would also like for people to support Somo Arts as well. So. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, so one last round um, from our special guest. So Nia, what's, what's next for Nia after uh, Hands Up? After hands up. Well, I'm hoping to go back on the seas. <laughs> I'm hoping to get back out there on ships uh, whenever COVID uh, decides to stop. <laughs> All right, gotcha, gotcha. Jermaine, what's next for you after hands up? Live my life. <laughs> Live my life. Okay. I definitely would love to be in so much more productions, any productions that I can do. I do want to um, start dancing as well because I'm trying to get in musical theater. So, you know, um, yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll so just be working okay. on myself. All right. So musical theater. I love it. All right. <laughs> and Piate. Um, Right now, I, um, I have a record label, an independent record label that's been established since May of this year. Uh, I just okay. signed the lease actually uh, today for the studio space. So I'm going to be working on okay. getting that cool. in and trying to build my clientele here in Tallahassee. And, you know, nice. if everything works out, if God decides to continue blessing me, uh, wow. we're going to, after my two years here, go to Miami and you know, make Miami pop off. A lot of people always like to go to Atlanta, New York, LA mm-hmm. for entertainment. No, I make home pop off and you gotta go nowhere. Right? Okay. Nice. Nice. Well, you learn about your own co your own co uh cast mm-hmm. on the conversation. Right. right. You didn't even know. I love you it. You did not know. You could have shared it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you got the exclusive right here. <laughs> they say success moves in silence, so sure. Yes, yes. Well, all the best to all of you. And <laughs> <laughs> once again, I appreciate it. You know, I, I'm just overjoyed to 
to have you on and to share your stories and um, you know to share this important work, to share your gifting. Because um, I, I am of the mindset that, that we all have gifts and talents that mm -hmm. the world is waiting on and we should not cannot sit on them and you all definitely are not sitting on them so again <laughs> congrats all the best i look forward to hearing more great and wonderful things from you about you and, and keep in touch you know let us know what's going on with you in the future thank you nicole thank yes. you thank you for having me definitely before y'all head out my yes. pleasure, pleasure. I want to thank our viewers who had lots of questions and comments. Mm -hmm. and, oh, my wingman tonight. No. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> yes, honey. Yes. Tonight. So, yes, shout out to Mr. Sissel for you know, being the, uh, the, the texter, you know, put the comments in there for me. So, all right. Well, we will catch y'all later and catch y'all on the weekend at the theater. Hands up. Bye. 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 Bye.